The reading today is from John chapter 4, verses 1 to 30. Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptising more disciples than John, although in fact it was not Jesus who baptised, but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he, now he had gone through Samaria, so he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answers her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you the living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, Go, call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, You are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What, have you, what you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. But you, have, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, Believe me. A time is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers that the Father seeks. God is Spirit and his worshippers must worship in the Spirit. And in the truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah, called Christ, is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. Just then, his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, What do you want? or Why are you talking to her? Then, leaving her water jar the woman went back to the town and said to the people come see a man who has told me everything i ever did could this be the messiah they came out of the town and made their way towards him thank you amen amen for that right just before we start the talk we're going to be giving out a few craft ideas for the children so in a little bit of instructions <laughs> um so children, there's some glue there. You can cut, you can stick on all the sh um, tissue paper around the outside. And then you've got these little droplets of water to thread through and tie. And you can tie it to the front like a little well with the water coming out. Or parents and, and helpers around can make their own little one. But they'll be given out now. <coughs> so... A few years ago, before that cut-off mark, you know, that COVID cut-off mark, we had the opportunity to go to Nigeria, to a community, part of the Satyrian Trust. And I know lots of you here support that trust and are part of it. And basically, it's this Christian organisation that supports young people with shelter and food and prayer and a Christian education. And as we were out in Nigeria. We had the opportunity to go to lots of different schools and um, talk to the children there. Now one school we were in 
one school we were in, um, there were hardly any children there. Then all of a sudden, these children kept coming in little trails, little drifts of children coming into school. And basically what had happened is before they started school, these children had to go to a well to collect the water and bring it back to their family, their community, and then walk to school. But these last weeks, there was no water left in the wells. They had dried up. So they were walking for hours and hours, for miles and miles, starting in the middle of the night to get the water for their families. We've got some slides coming up on these. So communities, the next slide I think is a picture of a, a lady where we were with the well there. Communities survive around wells. In the Old Testament, we see this, don't we? There are symbols of thriving communities. In Genesis, God commands Isaac to remain in the land of his father, where Abraham was, and to reopen those wells, to redig the water, the things that were closed. And then from that place, community was built. The, the animals and the people survived. So we're going to look at the significance of this well. I'm going to look at two things. I'm going to look at encounter and grace. So at this well, we get this little, this picture of what it means to encounter the living Lord. You see, Jesus was going on this journey, as he often did, from Judea to Galilee. And he made this direct route through Samaria. And on this journey, he meets many individuals. You see, he hasn't actually arrived at his destination where he thought he was going. But along the way, he stops off and he engages in conversation. Jesus engages and the woman engages. You see, this meeting, this encounter was life changing. Sitting and talking with Jesus. And it made me think how often in my journey to get through the day, to get through the week, to do all my jobs, to do my busyness, to get the shopping, to do all these good things which are important, how often do I encounter the living God? How often do I take time to sit at the well to encounter God? And I really had to sort of start to think in my own heart of the missed opportunities of encountering the living Lord. So tired Jesus, what does he do? He sits down, he's hungry, he's tired, but he's God, he's God's son. The word became flesh. We see the sovereignty of God, but the humanity of him at the same time. You see, He's there, he's understanding the emotions of the woman. The Samaritan woman came to do her normal job, her normal ordinary day, to draw the water. And we know it was the, the heat, the hottest part of the day in the midday sun. Now we know that people don't go out at that time. We know that they don't go on their own. The women come in as a group, but she was there because she was feeling isolated from her community. And she came and she got her bucket on her own. You see, Jesus engages around the well, the place where her community feels familiar, but also the place where the woman was avoiding. He engages there. And in that culture, the Jews and the Samaritans didn't speak to one another. Men weren't speaking to the women out in the open. But Jesus cuts across every culture divide here. At a time when she least expects it, an encounter, an unexpected encounter happens. And I wonder, I wonder in our lives, as we journey through our day, through our week, what encounters we're missing out because we're carrying on. And I really felt the heart of the Lord say to me, to, to us as a church, 
start looking for those encounters where to sit in the presence of God and speak to him about what he wants us to do. I wonder what change it would make. You see, at this place of meeting, there was no judgment, no avoidance and no shame. Jesus just sits with the lady in the heat of the day, in the mess of her life. He doesn't, he doesn't draw her away. There is no judgment, no avoidance, no shame. You see, this grace of God's riches at Christ's expense, this undeserved favour God pours upon her. God pours this favour over her and restores her identity. You see, God knows everything about her. Jesus knew everything and he pours it over her. So if I just pour this water over and over and over again. The grace of God just poured constantly on this woman just by sitting at the well in the presence of the living God. You see, she came for water, but in that encounter, her soul was satisfied. And Jesus says, I am he. Jesus says, I am the one that restores you, that walks with you, that meets with you. I am the one that satisfies you, that gives you dignity, that heals you. I am the one that formed you and knows you. I am the eternal living one. And you see, at that, that individual there was restored. That woman in that encounter was in, restored. And like the wells in the Old Testament that were covered up, that were trodden down, that produced a barren land. When Isaac came, he dug them out. He restored the springs and water and life flowed. In this lady, her life was restored. Her true identity in Christ was found. But not only that, the community was restored again, which was transformed. You see, communities survive and thrive and grow around the well. Churches survive and thrive and grow around the well of the living one. And I know in the church there's lots of tricky issues going on and things that are pulling people to and fro. But the church thrives and grows and survives when it stays close to the living Lord, when it takes its refreshment, its wisdom from Jesus. Let's pray. So Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this picture of the well. A picture of an encounter on an ordinary day. Help us to encounter you every single day of our lives. Help us in our busyness, in our routines of our life, in our hopes and our dreams, to sit on the edge of the well and meet with you. And Lord, I'm sorry for those missed opportunities. Forgive us for those missed opportunities, Lord, and as we move from this place, help us to see you in a new way. Help us to encounter the living spirit in a new way that we will see you, Jesus. We will see where you're working and know your presence. So we thank you for your grace poured upon us richly. Meet with us. Holy Spirit, meet with us. Amen.
And we're going to um, close in our, our song worship in a minute. And during that time, it would be really good for us to reflect on perhaps something that's said, as Emma's spoken about lots of things in the service and the worship and the words, or perhaps what's come out of the Bible passage here. We just really, we felt that maybe this morning there's people that just want to be filled afresh with the Spirit of God to encounter the living God by that picture of the well. Perhaps things have just, the journey of life has just been carrying on so fast that you need the opportunity to sit and say, living God, come and pour your grace upon me that I might overflow with your presence and your spirit and your wisdom as I walk the journey of life. And there's going to be an opportunity for prayer during the worship time. We're not leaving it to the end. And there'll be a prayer ministry team over here to your left. And if you just want someone to stand alongside, just to stand and just pray for the Spirit of God to rest upon you in a fresh way, then come and stand. Don't leave this place without meeting with God because we believe in the power of prayer.